Hello everyone, how are you doing? I'm Wendy Myers of MyersDetox.com and today I have a little respite for you guys uh, talking about something other than the coronavirus. I'm going to be talking about uranium toxicity and this is something that a lot of people uh, are really largely unaware of. I was unaware of it even though I've been detoxing for years and uh, it's something that was brought into my awareness as I've researched heavy metals and something that you need to know about. So today we're gonna cover how you're exposed to uranium, how uranium gets into your water, your drinking water and your shower water, symptoms of uranium toxicity, health conditions caused by uranium and symptoms and how to detox, uh, detect uranium toxicity, what's the best testing, and how to detox uranium and how I detox my uranium. And we're gonna go over some of my hair tests, some of my HTMAs or hair mineral analyses and review some of the studies also supporting all of this information. So a lot of a uh, fun filled hour for you guys today. So re remember to post your questions and uh, your concerns and detox questions, everything about uranium and uh, I will answer those after I am done here. So uh, first, uh, first things that I wanna go over, and yes, there's gonna be a replay. If you guys miss any of this, you wanna watch it again, you can watch it again on Facebook, on facebook.com slash Myers Detox. These are also posted to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wendy Myers. So I, I'm really excited about this because I've been wanting to do an article uh, about uranium toxicity for a long time and talking about it. I just haven't gotten around to it. And it's a, a growing issue that um, a lot of people aren't really aware of. So I'm gonna share my screen. I am publishing an article here, which uh, you guys can see. Let's see, so here is my article here that you guys can check out here. So if you wanna learn more about this, do a deep dive and look at all of the research um, supporting what I'm saying today, you can certainly do that. You can see all the research documented in uh, this blog post. So just go to myersdetox.com. It's right on the homepage there. And so back to, uh, let's get rid, of that, get rid of that screen share. So, it, this is a growing issue because there's around 40 trillion tons of uranium in the Earth's crust. It's everywhere. And for most of human history, that uranium didn't pose a problem. It wasn't a danger. It was locked away in solid rock and, you know, it did not, you know, harm people's bodies. But all of that changed in 1909. So what happened in 1909? A German chemist named Fritz Haber developed the world's first chemical fertilizer. The trouble is that these chemical fertilizers trigger an oxidation reaction that releases uranium from rocks, rocks that are in soil, in fields where you're growing corn and other vegetables. And this chemical fertilizer kind of etches that uranium and then it gets into the food and it gets into our water supplies. And the abuse of fertilizers has allowed this uranium to seep into our food, air, and water. And as a result, uranium toxicity is on the rise. And in fact, it's something that I see regularly with clients that I test and work with here in California. It's also prevalent in just the Southwest United States in general, Arizona, Nevada, Utah. I'll see clients that have uranium. But if you've lived in that area at any point, if you lived in California or the Southwest United States, you probably have some level of uranium in your body. And uh, you guys can check out my, uh, my HTMA here, my hair mineral analysis that I want to show you guys. And it's a... Let me show you my screen. This is my, my hair test that I did way back in 2016. Actually, I'm gonna show you this earlier one. It's one from December of 2015. And 
So as you can see, I have a, I had a lot of metals back then, but I had uranium. This U right here is uranium. And it was 0.0243. You can see it high up here in this pink range. And I had a pretty significant level of uranium. Also mercury, because I used to eat a lot of sushi, which I don't do anymore. I miss it so. But uh, so this, I had really high levels of uranium because I've lived in California for 30 years. So I've been showering in water that contains uranium, even though I drink bottled water my entire life. My whole life, I drank uh, Evian and other bottled waters. And I was just, that's just what I did. So I didn't get it from my drinking water. Um, so, uh, and then if you look at this next test that I have here, this is nine months later in 2016 you can see my uranium level went up even higher i was detoxing uranium at this time and when this happened when my uranium went all the way up here i lost about a fifth of my hair and i was i was really worried i thought i had cancer or had some thyroid issue or i thought i had some really serious health issue and putting two and two together when I did my hair test I realized I was having this huge uranium dump and then uranium causes hair loss and I see this with a lot of my my clients as well so uh, I'll turn off my screen share there for right now uh, I hope you guys were able to see that I hope you guys are able to see my hair test but anyways so uh, so what I want to go over right now is uh, that Many don't realize they're drinking water or showering daily in water that contains uranium, and that builds up over time. And uranium causes diabetes, blood sugar control issues, hair loss, and even cancers. So today we're going to be we're going to go over all of these common and overlooked symptoms of uranium toxicity and how to find out if you have uranium toxicity, as well as detox strategies, how to get it out of your body. So let's go over how we're exposed. Um, so there's two types of uranium. There's natural uranium that's just in the Earth's crust, and there's depleted uranium from nuclear weapons. And so um, they have an identical uh, identical chemical effect on the body and can be equally as dangerous. Um, but depleted uranium is the waste product of uranium enrichment in nuclear reactors. And it's basically what's left over when the highly radio, the highly radioactive isotopes of uranium are removed. And the, the primary source of this uranium exposure is um, well water. A lot of wells have uranium toxicity. We get it through modern day manufacturing, nuclear energy, and, um, and that just makes its way into our water. In fact, when scientists from the University of Nebraska took 275,000 groundwater samples for evaluation, they discovered that many Americans live about a kilometer from wells that are uranium polluted. And what's more, this study found that almost 2 million people in California and the Midwest live on aquifer sites which are up to which have up to 180 times the level of say, a safe level of uranium. But California and the Midwest aren't the only territories in the United States with high levels of uranium. According to the EPA, there's water sources across the U.S. that exceed the maximum contamination limit for uranium. Um, and um, yeah, and so uh, my my HDMA showed really high uranium, and um, I I detox it, and then more comes out. I had many hair tests that had high levels of uranium. And, um, you know, I've lived here in California for 30 years and this, it just kept building up and building up and it has to come out at some point. And I, I really think that a lot of people, the, one of the underlying root causes of diabetes and trouble losing weight or resistant weight loss and weight gain can be from uranium toxicity. A lot of people don't realize that. Um, so, so how does this uranium get into our water and into our drinking water and our shower water? 
So the majority of uranium is uh, in a solid form in soils and sediments and rocks, things like that. However, when these, these structures are exposed to minerals like nitrates found in fertilizers, it creates this oxidation reaction that frees the uranium. And uh, for millions of years, this, re this uranium was just in the soils, totally safe, inaccessible, un unable to get into our bodies. But with these chemical fertilizers like miracle Grow and other chemical fertilizers, um, in these high amounts of nitrates lead to high amounts of freed uranium. And when it becomes freed, it becomes water soluble and leaches into our water supply. And so I want to show you this article about uranium contaminated water in uh, California. So let me share my screen here. So if you look at this article right here, you'll see that um, Okay, this is the wrong article that came up. There it is. So uranium contaminated water in California wells, two million people affected. And so this article is just talking about, you know, how 275,000 groundwater samples were evaluated and 78% um, of the pollution comes from the nitrates in these chemical fertilizers and animal waste. Animal waste has a lot of nitrates as well. And it also talks about how there's, uh, from all of, you know, war-torn areas where they're shooting artillery that uh, has uranium-containing shells in war zones, that that uranium gets into the local areas, poisoning the people that live there, and also potentially poisoning the, the soldiers that are in combat and whatnot. And uh, so the really, really interesting article here, there's a link to it in my, my article. And so, um, let's see, okay, great. And so that's why for a, a lot of people, drinking water is, uh, you know, a primary route of exposure for uranium. And it's just one of the many reasons why it's so vital to have a reliable water filter system installed in your home. I recommend pH prescriptions, water filters. They've got, you know, under sink uh, water filters. They have whole house uh, water filters so you can filter your shower water. And pretty soon they're going to have a shower head called the derma shower that also filters heavy metals as well. Most filters, most shower filters don't filter heavy metals. They'll get some fluorine and chloride, which is great, but I haven't, that's why I've never recommended a shower head because I just really haven't found one, found one that met my standards. But when pH prescriptions come out with the derma shower, I'll have more information about that. because that's It's really inexpensive and solves a big problem, I think, for a lot of people where uh, they don't realize their water is a source of contamination for them. And so um, also keep in mind that uranium can stick to plant roots. So foods grown in uranium-rich soils can also present a problem, a source of toxicity. So you all, always want to wash your vegetables, especially root vegetables like potatoes and radishes, because those can have uranium in them. And um, and so some other sources of exposure are nuclear power plants, nuclear bombs, tests, occupational exposure like uranium mining and refining, medical use of nuclear material and being in the military, and exposure to anti-tank weapons, uh, tank armor, ammunition rounds, and manufacturing facilities of uranium as well and food grown in soil, it's high in uranium. So knowing all of this, it's it's not hard to see how we're exposed to, to uranium in our daily lives, often without realizing it. And um, so, so, to, so you wanna do an HTMA to test for uranium and other heavy metals. And uh, right now, I'll give you guys a link here. We are doing a special right now for anyone that wants to learn if they have uranium toxicity. 
a hair mineral analysis is only seventy six dollars. Uh, really, really simple. Oh, you guys didn't see my test. Shoot. So I will. Um, I'll show my test again. For some reason, I guess I didn't share my screen. Um, but so I'll share my screens again in a second. Um, so so let's talk about some symptoms of uranium toxicity. So uranium toxicity can present with a wide range of symptoms due to the fact that uranium can lodge into various tissues in your body. So in general, once uranium enters your body, the kidneys are the main target for the organs um, of, for its toxic effects. But uranium can also deposit in the bones, in the brain, in your lymph, in your lungs, and in your reproductive organs as well. Furthermore, uranium can bind to human DNA and trigger mutations that create protein replication errors. And this can lead to a, a host of issues in, in the body. And like all toxic substances, the, the adverse health effects of uranium on the human body depend on the route of exposure. So in most cases, uranium is deposited in the kidney and bones, but can also be in the lymph, brain, reproductive organs, and lungs. Um, so I wanna show you this study here about undiagnosed illness and radioactive warfare. So let me share my screen here. So let's see. Yeah, here we go. There we go. So I wanted to show this to you because, um, you know, there is a, a big concern about, um, you know, this is a, a really illuminating study about the toxic effects of uranium. And um, this study is basically going over, um, you know, the nuclear weapons race and the problem of uranium fallout in war-torn areas, how the bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima in Japan was a uranium bomb. There's a lot of contamination there. Um, just a lot of issues. And based on this, they found a lot of different health issues that were the result of uranium toxicity. So one of them is uh, cancer, anxiety, behavioral disorders, birth defects, chronic fatigue, chronic neurological conditions, depression, diabetes, poor, poor blood sugar regulation, elevated blood pressure, fibromyalgia, Gulf War syndrome, hair loss, uh, kidney damage, leukemia, lymphoma, um, reactive airway disease, renal dysfunction, thyroid cancers, vision degradation, bone deterioration, and weight gain resulting from diabetes and poor blood sugar regulation. So as you can see, I mean, this study is very, very illuminating, very, very comprehensive. And there's a link to this in my article on uranium toxicity. If you guys want to um, check that out. Oh, is it, am I not sharing my screen? Yeah, hopefully you guys can see what I'm, uh, yeah, so I'm sorry guys, I'm just um, not, uh, just learning how to use this software. Oh, it's so frustrating, so you guys haven't seen this. So I was just showing this um, article here that's you know really really illuminating on the different uh, really illuminating on the different uh, symptoms and health conditions that people have as a result of nuclear testing, nuclear fallout, nuclear bombs, and war torn areas, and the result of that. And so this is another source of contamination as well. So back to full screen here. Okay. So let's go over, um, you know, uh, a couple of things here. So reproductive issues. 
So one of the targets for uranium toxicity is your reproductive system. So research shows that uranium exposure may impact the health of your reproductive system by decreasing the fertility, creating toxicity in the embryo and fetus, and halting normal growth and development of the growing child. In one animal study, pregnant mice were exposed to uranium and then compared to a control, control group and uh, in the growth and development of their fetuses. And the researchers noted several disturbing abnormalities in the fetuses of mice exposed to uranium. The livers of the fetuses in the test group for uranium toxicity were bulkier and darker in, in appearance. The heads of the fetuses in the test group were larger. In one case, the fetus didn't have fingers. The weight and the size of the fetuses were larger than the controls and irregularities were noted in the cerebral cortex of the brains of the test groups. And what's more, the placenta weight was lower in the test group compared to the control. So uh, the placenta you know, feeds all the nutrients and oxygen to, to the fetus. And then lung disease, there's been several studies on lung disease and uranium miners, uh, uranium miners, uh, miners had more lung cancer, they had more pneumoconiosis, uh, 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 pneumoconiosis, which is a disease of the lungs uh, characterized by coughing and fibrosis. They had more emphysema. Uh, behavioral and neurological disorders are uh, common. And so I want to show one, uh, do a screen share here, do it properly. And so in this study, this study shows the, the long-term and short-term effects. And I'll share my screen here. So this study here shows the long and short-term effects of depleted uranium exposure on open field behavior and brain lipid oxidation in rats. And what this study found was that circulating uranium can rapidly enter your brain and can cause adverse neurological effects on your brain and central nervous system. And um, this study conducted on rats found that serum levels of uranium were cleared within 30 days, but the brain levels remained elevated. And this suggests that it may be more difficult to clear uranium from your central nervous system. And these rats also experienced impaired memory difficulty walking and decreased grip strength. And there was another study that showed that rats exposed to uranium experienced difficulties with movement and working memory. And they continued to show signs of decreased working memory for six days following the exposure. And the, the effects of uranium toxicity on the brain are still not 100% understood um, however, research suggests that uranium affects catecholamine levels, so specifically dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine. And these neurotransmitters are responsible for a range of neurological functions, including preparing for fight or flight, learning, memory, sleep, mood, and, and movement as well. So we're going to talk about how to detect uranium toxicity. And there are several methods for detecting uranium toxicity. So you can look at hair. You can look at hair mineral analyses. You can look at blood. You can look at urine analyses. And while all methods are viable, from my experience, uranium is most readily seen on a hair mineral analysis. So I'm going to try to show you guys my, my hair test again so you guys can see this. So let's look at my entire screen here. It's not working for some reason. Let's see. So I'll do a tab here. We are going to make this happen. So, so I'm going to share my screen here. There we go. And then there we are. So now you can see my hair test. So if you look at my old hair test here from, this is 2000, December 2015, you can see the uranium here to the U was really, really high. And so 
if we look at kind of the um, test as a whole, you know, very elevated, you know, I, I don't see this, um, you know, this, these levels in a lot of clients, you know, I had been detoxing for several years at this point. So my body was really primed for detoxification. I was releasing a lot of toxic metals. You can see mercury here, but very, very high levels here. And then fast forward nine months later. So I'll hide that one. I'm going to share a different screen here. So fast forward nine months later, and I had uh, even more uranium toxicity than I did before. And so you can see that here. So if we look at my uranium, you can see it went even higher. So the last test was, it was 0.0243. This one it raised even more. And it's been higher on hair tests before. And when this happened, this large dump of uranium happened, I, a fifth of my hair fell out. And it was very, very stressful. And I just did some detective work. I did a hair test immediately and found that I was dumping a ton of uranium. And it really gave me a lot of peace of mind because I, I realized what, what the issue was. And I've had a lot of clients with high uranium that they almost always have hair loss that uh, couples a uranium dump. Um, it, you're not always losing hair when you just have the presence of it. It seems to be when the uranium is coming out of your body that you do lose hair, which is kind of interesting. And so, so hair tests I find is the most accurate because urine is a common test used for heavy metals, but uranium doesn't always show in the urine even when you have it. And um, blood, blood analysis is, uh, or the issue with blood analysis is that most uranium will be cleared from circulation and sequestered into your tissues after the initial exposure. So it, you're not going to see it in blood if the test you even do shows uranium. I mean, most blood tests are just looking at the big four, mercury, lead, arsenic, and cadmium. So most blood tests don't, do, don't look at uranium. And so uh, hair testing is the way to go, and that is the, the most accurate way to see uranium levels in your tissues. Okay. And uh, also using a hair analysis can also provide insight into levels of, of other toxic metals in your body and provide kind of a roadmap for detoxing it as well. And if uh, if people do have uranium, I really strongly encourage people to do a household water test to uh, test if their body, if they they have, uh, you know, find what their source of uranium is, because that's um, you know what we ha you've got to figure out what the sources of uranium are. You're not always going to know, but if it's your tap water or shower water that's the source of uranium, you've got to do get some sort of a filter on there so that you prevent the influx of it into your body. The only alternative is to just work on continually monitoring and detoxing the uranium from your body. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about how to detox uranium. So the, the most effective way is to use a chelating agent or a mobilizing agent that's going to go into your cells and grab the uranium and try to remove it from your body. And um, so citrus pectin, is the most effective thing to use, or it's one of the a, a really good effective thing to use. Citrus pectin is a polysaccharide, and it's a powerful antagonist antagonist for uranium. Research shows that citrus pectin can decrease levels of heavy metals um, on average seventy four percent without side effects. And so, uh, this is my binder here at Citricleanse. This is a very powerful citrus pectin that you can use to reduce uranium levels. And uh, this contains grapefruit citrus pectin. And then there are zeolites. Uh, zeolites are minerals that contain a microporous structure, making them ideal for capturing and removing heavy metals. And they're really well known to be potent absorption materials, assisting in clearing away compounds like uranium. Um, my favorite product is Cytodetox by, um, uh, by uh, this is my friend Dr. Pampa, and um, I will share my screen here and show that to you guys. 
so you guys can see what this looks like. This is Cyto Detox. This is in my store and store up myersdetox.com. Just search for zeolite or Cyto Detox and that will come up. That's a great one. And um, also, uh, if you're wondering about my Citricleanse uh, binder, the Citricleanse binder here is the, the other thing that I recommend. When you're doing any type of a detox, you need to be taking a binder. The number one mistake people make is not taking a binder. Whether you're doing coffee enemies or infrared saunas or any type of a detox program, whatever your nutrient you're taking to get rid of heavy metals, you have to take a binder or you're going to suffer needlessly. You'll suffer side effects like headaches or nausea or brain fog or fatigue or things like that because um, you know these metals get pulled out of cells. They start floating around in the bloodstream. They can deposit and redistribute somewhere else. So to avoid that, you need to be using a, a binder. And um, the next thing you want to use for uranium is EDTA. So EDTA is a really powerful tool. I'll show this to you uh, for uh, binding on to uranium. And if, if I have a client that's really toxic in uranium, I'm going to be using EDTA. So um, EDTA is an amino acid, and it's been used for decades to combat heavy metal poisoning, and it clears lead from the blood. It gets manganese. Uh, it gets a, a lot of other metals. It's lead. It's really effective at removing uranium. And I like this Kelotox suppositories. These are fantastic for removing uranium. I also like uh, Dr. Chris Shade's EDTA liposomal. It's an oral supplement you take orally. It's a you know, spoonful. And this also has a little bit of lipoic acid in it, which is great. But you have to take a lot of this. EDTA doesn't absorb orally very well. So this is put into a liposomal form, but it still doesn't, uh, doesn't work as well as a suppository. So the suppositories are about three times as effective um, for the, say, if you're looking at the dollar amount you're spending. You have to do a Kelotox suppository about every other day. And so that's about three a week. That's the equivalent of doing an IV EDTA chelation um, uh, session. And so they're the equivalent in the amount of EDTA they remove but this is much, much less expensive to do just three suppositories as opposed to one IV chelation session of EDTA IV. So this is what I take, this is what I give my clients. This is also amazing for cadmium toxicity if anyone has cadmium. So that's what I like. This is what I uh, give to people. And then glutathione. Glutathione, really important. It's one of the most essential antioxidant compounds in your body. It's your master antioxidant for detox and uranium binds to glutathione resulting in um, this being eliminated from your system and so I recommend for glutathione uh, the main thing I recommend is my my daily detox supplement um, this is a bro fermented broccoli sprouts formula and the fermented broccoli sprouts are really, really high in natural glutathione. And, uh, but this has a lot of other liver support herbs in it and alkalizing greens. It's really, it's all organic. It's fantastic. And so that's, with glutathione, you don't have to take glutathione by itself. You don't have to take a glutathione supplement. A lot, most of them are garbage. You need to take, eat foods rich in glutathione foods that support glutathione production, things like coffee enemas increase glutathione. And, but you, if you want to, you can take a glutathione um, product. Uh, I really like uh, Chris Shade's liposomal glutathione. Some people react to this. Some people just cannot handle straight glutathione. So a lot of clients, I just give them NAC, which is a precursor to make glutathione here. Pure Encapsulations makes a really nice one here. So that's really good stuff there as well. So um, that, guys, I, I didn't click the show on stream. I'm so sorry, you guys. Just kind of, I don't know what's going on here. Oh, yeah, yeah. This, this um, system is a little bit glitchy. Um, so I really apologize about that. Mm. 
Yeah, so I went to that whole spiel and you didn't see any of that. Great. Um, so um, I can go over it again just to make it really, really quick just so you guys can see this. So uh, the first thing I talked about, uh, this is in my store at store.myersdetox.com. So the first thing I talked about was a uh, citra cleanse. So citra cleanse is the binder that's really important for binding uranium and uh, detoxing it from the body. Any any supplement you're going to take to get rid of uranium, you want to take a binder like citra cleanse to absorb it and then you urinate it out. So really important uh, if you have uranium, you're found to have uranium. This is a key nutrient to take. Um, the next thing you want to take is, uh, that you can take, is a zeolite. Um, I love Cider Detox. Um, this is what uh, I recommend to people, clients if they have uranium. Fantastic uh, zeolite in a liposome, so it makes it more effective to bind on the uranium. The next thing I recommend is um, EDTA. So the EDTA here that I like is uh, Kelotox. So these are Kelotox suppositories here. Um, these are really, really effective. You take one about every other day, and one box will last you about two months. This is probably the most effective thing against uranium, but it also detoxes cadmium. If you're not into suppositories, you can do this liquid liposomal EDTA as well. You can do that right, by Quicksilver Scientific if you prefer that. And then uh, last but not least, um, if you want to increase glutathione production, my daily detox supplement here has fermented broccoli sprouts and uh, excellent, excellent at uh, increasing glutathione in the body. Um, you can also opt to just take straight glutathione, but some people, some people really have problems with taking just straight glutathione, even though it's a very effective detox agent. Some people react to it, especially if you're ill. So I exercise caution with clients. Um, I give them NAC, uh, which is a building block precursor to make glutathione, and that can be used instead of just straight glutathione if you have problems with that. Um, but I prefer things like fermented broccoli sprouts, avocados, foods rich in glutathione, doing coffee enemas as well to uh, make glutathione. Okay, great. So sorry about all these technical issues. I thought I had this amazing thing all planned out and it's uh, like not working out. But so, so you guys saw my screen. So pulling it all together, uh, uranium toxicity doesn't make the headlines. It's not very sexy. I'm trying to make detox sexy here, okay? Uh, but this the heavy metal is more pervasive than people think. And so health conditions like kidney disease, lung disease, reproductive issues, neurological disorders, and uh, can all result from toxic levels of uranium, including diabetes. Uh, people don't realize diabetes is a disease of toxicity. Yes, it can be due to carbs. Uh, yes, it's overeating. But what makes it so you, your body isn't able to process carbohydrates? What makes it, what is causing the blood sugar in your bloodstream to not be able to enter the cells. It's not just overeating carbohydrates. It's there's so many different toxins that affect pancreatic function, that affect uh, different aspects of blood sugar control. And I believe diabetes to be a disease of toxicity, uh, not, uh, not necessarily lifestyle and diet. The, those are contributors. You can't eat sugar all day long and expect some miracle to happen with your health. But toxins play a huge role in people that are living a relatively healthy lifestyle and still develop the disease. Uh, not to mention there's a long list of potential health concerns, cancers, high blood pressure, chronic fatigue that are associated with uranium. Um, so I just encourage you guys, if you're this kind of has piqued your interest, if you live in California or the Southwest United States or you did at any time, maybe it's time to check your, your mineral levels, your uranium levels using a hair mineral analysis. So um, I, so I'm going to give you you a little uh, 
link here to get a hair mineral analysis. I'll put this in the comments. It's only $76. This is the cheapest price anywhere on the internet. You can't find a cheaper price for a hair mineral analysis. It's an amazing price for a functional diagnostic test like this that can give you so much information about your mineral levels and about your toxicity levels. And I'll show you guys my hair test again, just to give you an idea, like a little preview of what um, this looks like. So I'll actually share my screen with you this time. <laughs> so if you look at um, this hair test, so I'll show my screen. So if you, you look at this, you can see on this test, here's my, my test from 2000, this 2016. Um, I actually wanted to show you my other one. So let me show that to you right now. So I wanted to show you my older one because it looks a little bit more toxic than the one I just showed you. There you go. So um, this is my hair mineral analysis from 2015. And at, I was very stressed at, at this time. I think I had just gotten divorced uh, or I was in I was very, very stressed state. I was in the it was before, I think, before I got divorced or right after and very stressed out. And you can see my iron levels here uh, was was very, very high. I was having I was dumping toxic iron from my body. I was dumping toxic cobalt from my body here. The CO you can see here. Um, I was dumping uranium. I had uh, mercury toxicity that was coming out as well. And, and you can also see your mineral levels. This can guide all of your mineral supplementation. Sodium, potassium, copper, zinc, and selenium, boron, other minerals. It can give you a clue as to what minerals you need to be focusing on. And I also was, you can see the BA here, my barium was dumping really, really high. Um, I, I don't know where I picked that up, but it was coming out of me. It was pouring out of me and also some toxic strontium. Many of us pick up uh, toxic strontium. Um, it can be from nuclear fallout. Fukushima is spewing a ton of toxic radioactive strontium in the environment. Some people think there's spraying of strontium happening in our environment to control the weather pattern. So I picked this up somewhere, it was coming out of my body. And um, also tin, the SN, I had tin coming out as well. So just a lot going on. And, um, you know, for me, doing a hair mineral analysis has really um, given me huge clues into my health and given me a lot of insight into how I should detox, guiding my detox supplements, my mineral supplements as well, giving me kind of insight into how well I'm doing and how well my body is detoxing as well. And this has really given me a tremendous amount of, of information. It's, and I, today I feel amazing. I feel fantastic. When I wake up in the morning, I am happy and I'm excited to start my day. I am uh, I'm, I'm in a good mood. I'm very, my mind is very, very clear. I don't know if you guys watch any of my old videos on YouTube. <laughs> But I was uh, definitely, it's like nine days. Like the, the energy, the vitality, the brain, the clarity of thought and how I speak is much different compared to what it was seven years ago, uh, eight years ago when I first started Myers Detox. And, um, you know, and I just, uh, I feel I have a lot of energy. I sleep really well. I just feel great. And I could not say that seven, eight years ago when I started on my my. You know, I started my detox journey about 10 years ago, but, um, but really I, I started feeling better within a few months of taking minerals and working on my health. But really it's just over time, I've learned more and more about different metals, how to detox them, adding some bioenergetics, adding EMF protection in there and doing things like that, that have uh, resulted in how good I feel today. So that's why I have to teach you guys this stuff. So let's talk about, uh, let's go to your questions here. Let's see. So the first question here. Um, so Esther, sorry, I won't be available for your 4 p.m. meeting. Will there be a replay? Yes, always a replay, always a replay. 
So anytime I do these lives, these broadcasts, you can watch them again on my Facebook page on facebook.com slash Myers Detox, or we upload them to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wendy Myers. You can always see them there. See all the old Facebook lives there also as well. Um, so, so Esther, so what do you do for diarrhea? So for diarrhea, um, that can be caused by, you know, bacterial infections, parasites, things like that. You know, typically you want to eat more fiber if possible, but diarrhea can have so many different causes, food sensitivities, stressors, irritable bowel syndrome. There's a lot of different symptoms. I have an article on my site, IBS with diarrhea, that gives a lot of really, really good clues as to different underlying causes, things that you can do, foods that may be causing it. Sometimes people have to go on like an SCD diet, like a specific carbohydrate diet, and, or do food sensitivity testing. Um, there's just a lot of things that can co contribute to that, so there's no easy answer, I'm sorry. So let's see, so Sandy Zietman, hi, how are you? Thank you for joining us. So, um, yeah, so a lot of guys complaining that you can't see my hair test, sorry. <laughs> and so Robin, not seeing my screen, apologize for that. Stephanie Hill Kirk, thank you, Wendy, for going over this. Been so, been so excited to learn about it. So Stephanie, so our doc who does HTML tests said this is showing up on a lot of his tests. Yeah, uranium is uh, for so many clients, a lot of my clients have a lot of uranium, or they'll have like a little bit on a hair test, but then on future tests, they'll have more that's coming out. So just because you have, you don't have uranium on one test, doesn't mean that at one point on a future test, like you start in a detox program, you start feeding your body the nutrients that it needs to detox, you start doing detox protocols, you could see um, uranium coming out on future tests. And um, let's see. So Stephanie Hillkirk, so why was your uranium, uranium higher? Was it releasing from fat cells? I don't know. I mean, it, it could be that that uranium was releasing from fat cells. I don't think at that time I was I was losing weight. Uh, I may have been. Um, but you know, the body once it's it gets the kind of the energy or the nutrients it needs or the chelators or binders or whatever it needs to get rid of stuff, it starts going to work in and releasing stuff. So I don't know why it came out exactly. I just know that it did. And, and I started taking things to facilitate that. Now that I know that there's a presence of it, of uranium based on my hair test, I started taking things to continue to facilitate that removal. And so, so Tammy, so which water test do you recommend? So I'll give you a link to the water test here. Uh, so the, uh, this is the one that we offer because we, we help clients kind of investigate where they're getting these heavy metals. So a lot of people, if they see this stuff and they're like, where did I get this? So I just posted in a comment the, the water metals test. Um, but if you're curious about why you got any metal, um, I have an article on my site um, called the Toxic Metals Sources and Symptoms Guide. And this can also help to kind of give you a clue as to where you're picking up certain heavy metals, the sources, the most common sources, and where uh, the symptoms that they cause as well. So I'll put that here, sources and symptoms of uh, toxic metals. So I say toxic metals because they're not all heavy metals, but that's just the phrase that uh, people like to use. There you go. So sources and symptoms of heavy metals. The water test that I do with clients is from uh, Trace Minerals International. They're a lab in Germany. And so their water test is very comprehensive. It's a lot of different heavy metals. A lot of water tests only test a handful of things. They don't, it's not very comprehensive when it comes to heavy metals. So this is the test that I run uh, for people. So Vic, so how can you filter uranium from household water supplies? What filters do this? So on, um, I have an article on my site, the, it's called uh, the best water filter on the market. And so this company, PH Prescriptions, 
has a number of filters. They're, they have under sink filters. They have whole house water filters that are excellent at removing uranium. And so I'll post a link to this article. But this is the, the company that I like, that I recommend now. So the best water filter on the market. So I'll give you guys that link. And so that's who I like. And so Jesse, so when I had my HMA done, uranium was almost the very top of the hair test. Then I had my kids tested, and one of them was at the very top. The other was off the chart. Nobody can really explain to me why it was so higher other than California water is high in uranium, and we lived there briefly. Then I also read on the HDMA, uranium is one of the easiest to have false high readings, so it freaked me out for sure. Yeah, I mean, certainly, I mean, there's any any um, metal could potentially have a false high reading. I don't see that very often. I mean, I, you know, it, and I find that metal toxicities run in families, so when I usually find, you know, mother, child, family will have similar heavy metals. So the fact that you found that in not only yourself, but another family member, it's probably not a, a false reading. It's not a, a false positive. Um, so it, it's not really something to be freaked out about. You know, you just, there's ways to remove it and get it out of your body. And, um, you know, you just have to be proactive in, in removing it. So Robin, so I had super, super high uranium, 0 0.301. Wow, that's, that's a lot. And you sit your spectrum for six months and it was cut in half. My water uranium was low. I can't figure out the source. So, you know, you could have acquired uranium at any point in your life. It could have been from a well water. It could have been from a vacation. I mean, people don't always remember these sources. But when you look at this toxic metal sources and symptoms guide that I posted, you might read through the sources and be like, oh, that's maybe, and think back uh, about different trips that you took or places that you lived, or maybe you lived on well water when you were a kid. And uh, people people think about maybe their most recent lifestyle that that is uh, that their most you know recent lifestyle and diet and healthy habits should have an effect on their metals tests or or whatnot. But really, your entire life, your exposure to your whole life, um, can build up in your body and come out later uh, when your body is ready to detox. That has the energy or the nutrients to do so. So it, you could have an exposure at any, any point in your life. So does a chelatox have side effects? I really have not uh, had anyone had negative side effects. Most people feel better from it, though you do have sulfury smelling gas. That's one negative side effect, but not harmful, just not pleasant for your partner who thinks that you're nuts for detoxing and <laughs> using suppositories. Um, so that's the only side effect. Um, so let's see. So Vic, so where can you buy Kelatox? So uh, I mentioned in my store that uh, you guys can get Kelatox uh, here in my store. So I'll put the Kelatox here. You guys want that? And these are the suppositories. And you can search for EDTA on store.myrtox.com and find it. So Vic, so my uranium hair just have been off the charts. Yeah, so it's a lot of people have uranium toxicity. It's very, very common. So Vic, I've tested my water and it has high uranium. I live in Arizona, southwest United States, where it's common. My hair tests are super high. How can I filter uranium from the water? So I posted my recommendations. pH prescriptions is fantastic. Uh, they have very, very comprehensive water filters. Um, Robin, thanks, Wendy. You're the best. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Yeah, I love doing these, and I'm so happy that I finally got around to doing a uranium toxicity article. I have another one this week on gadolinium toxicity, so I have to do a Facebook Live on that one. And we're going to go, and of course, go through all the metals. There's been articles I've been wanting to write, but they're so excited. There's just so many things I want to report to you guys and tell you how to detox it and how to test for it, but only so many hours in the day. So guys, thanks so much for tuning in. That's I'm going to sign off for right now and get my daughter to karate. She's going to be an orange belt uh, in a couple weeks. So I'm really excited for her. She's a yellow belt right now. and She'll be an uh, orange belt pretty soon. And uh, so excited for her. So I'm going to get her off to her class. So thanks for tuning in and uh, for joining me here. I'm here every Tuesday 
at uh, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. This will be on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wendy Myers. You missed the beginning, just uh, wait for a couple minutes. It will be back on uh, my Facebook page, facebook.com slash uh, Myers Detox. So thanks for, for tuning in and I'll talk to you very soon.